Oh, Dr. Samir and Dr. Ishwamurthy and entire EFIGS team to put forward this wonderful EFIGS course in Rajamundri. And since we landed at Rajamundri around uh, 11.30, we have been uh, pleasantly surprised by Rajamundri, by the town, the beauty of Godavari and now by this hospital and smart lab headed by your smartest leader, Dr. Gani Bhaskar Rao. So, thank you so much for inviting us. This is a topic given to me, role of endoscopy in GERD and echelasia. It is a big topic, I will try to show you which is useful in your practice and it will be more of a clinical and practical purpose. Before I start the video, how many of the delegates and fellows are doing actually upper GI endoscopy? Can you raise your hands? So, almost 50 percent. So, 50 percent of you are not even doing upper GI endoscopy. So, you have learned here the upper GI endoscopy, how it is done and you have seen normal findings. Can we switch off some lights so that we can have better visual here? So, this is a video, this is a mild GRD, you can see the gastroesophageal junction here, the mucosal junction and there is mild esophageal reflux disease and hiatus is little lax, here you can see the hiatus is little lax. So, there is a small hiatus hernia and you can see the mucosal G junction. So, it is a mild GRD with small hiatus hernia. Another case, we are in the esophagus and here you see linear ulcers. So, this is a linear ulcer right from the G junction up into the junction of the upper and mid esophagus, large hiatus hernia again. Here you can identify the squamocolumnar junction, lex LES and when we come out, you will see again. See, severe erosive GRD, multiple columns and if we define it in Los Angeles classification, it is grade C and there is a large hiatus hernia. So, such patient would definitely benefit from uh, surgery and when we come out, you have to make sure that in each patient, you see the larynx and vocal cords and see that whether there is any reflux laryngitis or not. Another case here, so here again you see severe erosive GRD with slough, the esophagus is narrowed there is a possible stricture and here is was the mucosal G junction, here is the lax LES, wide LES, so again there is a large hiatus hernia, severe GRD and complications of GRD leading to narrowing of the lower esophagus and developing stricture. Again this patient would definitely benefit by surgery. Now, I will show you this case in which there is a diverticulum also, see the esophageal diverticulum and then severe GRD, again large hiatus hernia and see widely open LES, you can go into the LES and see from below the mucosal G junction. And this is the portion of hiatus hernia, this is the mucosal G junction and severe erosive GRD 
and you can see the esophagus because of chronic GRD even the wall is not normal and then you will see diverticulum see large diverticulum on the right side. Here I will show you another patient with uh, this is called FICE technology, this is a Fujinon scope, it is similar to NBI which you see on Olympus and we are doing J maneuver, see the large sliding hiatus hernia defect and another multiple large para esophageal hernia defects. So, this patient definitely requires surgery, I operated this patient and we put in a mesh also in addition to the cruroplasty. This picture is very typical, if you just have to see one picture of GRD, this picture is very typical. There is a mucosal G junction, from here till here there is hiatus hernia, there is a scadzis ring where normally these patients develop the stricture. So, this one picture only is very classical of GRD, I will not go in detail of this, but I just put slides here to say that to do pH manometry study also you require upper GI scopy in uh, <coughs> such patients. Now we all know till now as a surgeon we know that uh, for GRD there are group of patients who will definitely benefit from surgery. But now when we talk about endoscopy each day we are going from invasive to minimally invasive to non-invasive surgery. And in such effort, uh, this procedure has come up which is known as Treta procedure. The principle is you bring down the endoscope here and then you measure this distance of G junction from the incisor teeth. Then you pass in a, a Strata balloon which is a balloon which can transmit the radio frequency energy and then you give radio frequency energy to the G junction 2 centimeter above and 2 to 2 and half centimeter below and that will cause fibrosis and thickening of this part and it will prevent reflux, that is the principle. How it is done I will show you. This is not universally available in world, it is being practiced at uh, selected places, sorry. So, you can see this is the strata balloon and it has this uh, hooks which transmits this energy, radio frequency energy. So, it is given at separate places covering about 5 centimeter of this area. The procedure hardly takes half an hour, it is done under conscious sedation like propofol. So, the treatment is almost complete and it will bring together this sphincter, so because of the fibrosis. We can say it is still experimental, it is not available universally, it is not practiced universally, but the days are coming where we are going away from the surgery to the endoscopic means and this is a one big step towards it. Maybe 10 years down the line all of us would be doing this procedure only and nothing else, but right now it is not the time. Then this is another procedure, this is the pre procedure, there is a slightly lax LES and post procedure. Now this is a device. It has a stapler inbuilt here in the endoscope and there is a cartridge which you need to change and here is the ultrasound machine, so it is an endosonoscope. So, we have to do such procedures through 
the outer tube the, the scope comes out and then you bend and do the J maneuver identify the anatomy then do you you have to do endosono to find out also the anatomy in beside the mucosa and then this tapular part is brought in here and this fold of uh, greater curvature is taken over to this staple cartridge and then it will be again seen by the endosono. Then this two anchor screw will come out and fix this part of the scope to this part and then you fire the stapler. and the similar firing is done on the other side also like this. So, you have got a fundal wrap inside. This is a typical look which you will get once you have when you are doing a endoscopy after laparoscopic fundoplication you you will get this look inside and this you can do it with this kind of machine the endosonoscope with stapler. So, again this is a prototype this is being developed, it is being tried at uh, selected places, not uh, clinically practiced routinely, but few years down the line this may become the standard of care and we may not be doing surgery for this kind of reflux disease. I will move on to ecclesia cardia, all of you are aware what is ecclesia, best thing to diagnose is a barium swallow and this is the cut section. How it looks on endoscopy, one has to be very careful to diagnose it on endoscopy. So, when we are going inside the esophagus, see this pool of saliva, it is one of the classical sign of ecclesia. When you see this kind of pool of saliva, then obviously it is an ecclesia. The esophageal motility will be low and this is the end point. This patient already had balloon dilatation before patient came to me which failed, uh, but still see hypomotile esophagus with pool of saliva and smooth narrowing when you are passing through the G junction. These are the classical features of uh, ecclesia. Again always look at larynx completely when you are coming out, the vocal cords, all the laryngeal cartilages and look at the reflux laryngitis or in ecclesia it is because of the regurgitation there will be laryngitis. Now, when we are doing laparoscopic ecclesia cardia surgery, lap hellers cardiomyotomy, then this is a standard lap hellers cardiomyotomy. I am going to show you endoscopy on table we are doing to judge the completeness of the cardiomyotomy and it gives us the double view from inside as well as we get the laparoscopic view and on laparoscopy also we get to see the, the endoscopic light. So, it is very useful and being a surgeon if you know upper GI scopy this will help you in your practice a lot. <coughs> At as of now the standard treatment of ecclesia cardia is lap hellers cardiomyotomy, but this may change very soon. So, we I personally do anterior dissection only, I do not go posteriorly and do dissection because the surgery we are doing is anterior. So, we do anterior dissection, we mobilize the fundus completely from the angle of his, but we do not divide short gastric unless it is really preventing the doors anterior fundoplication which we are routinely doing. So, we divide this attachment, the phrenoesophageal ligament and the fundal attachment to the left cross of diaphragm and then once it is mobile completely then we do this lower mediastinal dissection so that we have the exposure of 7 to 8 centimeter of esophagus. We follow this uh, safe technique which is a blunt dissection, these are longitudinal muscle fibers. So, we separate them, this is the anterior vagus 
which is kept on left side and then we separate this longitudinal muscle fibers slowly till we see the glistening mucosal surface. Now, this is the mucosa see it is very easy to identify mucosa. Once you are in the correct plane, you can divide it with uh, harmonic or this I am just separating and this is the on table endoscopy see how nicely you can see there are no esophageal fibers. You can go right into the stomach and come back and you can identify on laparoscopy view as well as on GI endoscopy view that whether the, the myotomy is complete or not. So, it is very helpful and one should learn to do this. Currently, all the bariatric surgeons are learning or have learned upper GI scopy because they realize that every time they cannot get gastroenterologist to look into it and gastroenterologist may not have experience of doing post bariatric endoscopies. Now, this video I have borrowed from my guru and my friend Dr. Nageshwar Reddy to show you per oral endoscopic cardiomyotomy or POEM. So, basically concept here is that through the endoscope, we inject saline into the esophageal mucosa, so that the mucosa is lifted up. We go into submucosa, separate everything and then we do myotomy, we cut the muscle. So, we are injecting saline with methylene blue to lift up the mucosa and once there is sufficient rise, there is a needle here. So, with that needle we cut the mucosa there is we make a vertical opening in the mucosa about 1 to 1.5 centimeter size which will be required to enter into submucosa. And once we enter the submucosa we go on dividing the submucosal fibers and we have to inject in between the saline so that we can get uh, the submucosal area lifted up. It, the look is very classical, it is a cotton wool appearance and we go on dividing that till we reach the G junction and then we come out of the submucosal space, go into the mucosal lumen and check whether we have reached the G junction or not. So, this now looks as if we have reached the G junction part. So, we come out and then we go into the mucosal lumen see. So, this is the G junction. So, we have reached up to here. So, we go back again into submucosal space and now start dividing the muscle which starts about 1.5 centimeter below the mucosal incision. So, there is a flap wall mechanism. When we do laparoscopic Heller's myotomy, we make sure that the mucosa is not opened and if it is open, then we close it. Here, we open the muscle from inside, but we close the mucosa and we make sure there is a distance of 1.5 centimeter between the mucosal incision and the muscular incision. So, that that area will work as a flap valve. So, again this endoscopic surgery is showing promising results and time may come in future in few years time that uh, the surgeons will be left with nothing if, he, if they are not doing GI endoscopy. So, and this uh, particular procedure all these are advanced uh, surgical procedure being done through endoscopy. So, it is better done by surgeons and even uh, I have seen few physicians who are doing the keep surgeons with them. So, thank you very much for your patient hearing. I have another presentation will I will finish now and then we can have questions. Is it okay?
No, no, no. The second topic I am given is endoscopy in bariatrics and again there are so much of uh, research and clinical trial are being done in this field. Bariatric uh, has been with uh, diet, lifestyle modification and then surgery. Since 1991 when it was approved that the gastric bypass and surgeries like that should be done in morbidly obese patients. There was no role for endoscopy. So, gradually the endoscopic people, the endoscopic surgeons, the endoscopists, they go on working on the bariatric population and they found out few techniques which can definitely help the bariatric people. So, first thing I am going to show is the balloon placement, the intragastric balloon placement. This is a, uh, the old version of balloon which was available in past, still available. It has a life of 6 months and it has to be removed. So, this procedure is being done in left lateral position, patient is given uh, conscious sedation by propofol. We do upper GI endoscopy first and then we remove the scope and then we lubricate the balloon and put the balloon inside on its own and then once the balloon is inside, we put the scope again and see that the balloon is placed properly in the stomach. So, this balloon is now in stomach and then we start inflating the balloon with uh, saline with methylene blue about 450 to 500 ml of liquid. The concept here is that the intragastric balloon will occupy that much space in the stomach and that will reduce the capacity of the patient to eat. So, the balloon is placed This balloon has a mechanism that once you have filled it up enough, then you just have to pull out the plug and that part will seal itself. And this is how it looks when we do J maneuver. And then we come out. The life of this balloon is 6 months. At 6 months, we have to remove the balloon. Having balloon in the stomach will give the patient nausea, vomiting, epigastric pain kind of symptoms, but most of the patients will get settled down in 3 to 6 weeks time. And it will give you a weight loss of about 10 to 15 kg depending on how much diet and lifestyle modification patient is following. The disadvantage of balloon is patient will regain almost all weight within a year after removal of balloon. Now, this balloon when we need to remove, see this balloon has been there for 6 months. So, the balloon wall gets thickened and we need to puncture it with the needle and suck out the fluid. So, we are using this 21 gauge needle and the balloon wall is so thick, sometimes it takes few attempts. Then over a period of time due to experience, we realize that you do not have to make only one hole, we make multiple holes if you are using this balloon and suck out all the liquids. So, I will fast forward it little bit. Now, last bit of liquid is being removed. And then we, we can remove it with a snare, but uh, most of the time snare does not hold it properly. So, we use it foreign body grasper forcep, foreign body forcep which is very sturdy. It holds the uh, thick balloon and then we can pull it out with the scope like this. Now, because of the 
6 months lifetime and difficulty in removal, there are other types of balloon available. This is called sparse 3 balloon and this balloon is adjustable balloon. Once we put in, we can put in 400 ml and then we can readjust, we can put in more liquid if the patient is not losing weight or we can reduce the liquid and the mass of balloon if the patient is having more symptoms. So, pre balloon we check everything the esophagus, stomach and D1, D2, D3 and now again the balloon is placed and filled up with methylene blue saline and we normally inflate it with uh, 450 to 500 ml of liquid at the first go and this balloon has got a, a tubular connection which needs to be detached so that the cork will come back into the stomach. So, this tube is holding it. So, gradually we separate this tube after pulling it out and then there is a thread which will remain. This thread will be there and we push that cork inside the stomach and the balloon at the end of the procedure looks like this. And to take out this balloon is easy. We pull that thread out and then we connect it with a syringe needle and a tubing and remove all the fluid, suck out everything and then we can slowly pull it out. This balloon has a life of one year, it can remain in the stomach for one year. That these are the advantages of the balloon, one year life adjustable and easy to inflate and deflate. Post bariatric surgery also we are called or we are asked to do endoscopy. This patient had a MGB that is called mini gastric bypass. And uh, this was a check endoscopy for which the patient was referred. And here you can see the gastric pouch and the gastrojejunostomy anastomosis, gastrojejunal anastomosis. And these patients are prone to develop marginal ulcers if they are smoking. So, we need to look into it. And then we enter the jejunum and we can go into jejunum for almost 2, 3 feet depending on what is the requirement. So, this is just a diagnostic uh, endoscopy, but sometimes we are also called to do the therapeutic endoscopy post bariatric surgery. This patient had MGB and developed gastrojejunal stenosis, the anastomotic narrowing structure and so the patient was referred for balloon dilatation and you can see once we enter there is food everywhere and so it requires lot of wash out. Obviously, we need to have anesthetist and uh, uh, preferably intubated patient with lot of muck inside so that to prevent the aspiration. So, we wash out everything, suck out everything and then uh, we can see inside This is the stricture part. So, now the balloon is placed across the stricture. This balloon is called CRE balloon. It is a graded dilatation. So, we dilate it about 12 to 15 millimeter depending on the tightness of stricture, depending on the requirement.
and we deflate it and we reinflate it again to complete the dilatation procedure. The newcomer in this field of endoscopy and bariatrics is a endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty. Those of you who are aware about bariatric surgery, bariatric surgery in India came up with gastric bypass, but immediately we started doing sleeve gastrectomy and once we were going through sleeve gastrectomy page, there was a new uh, surgical thing technique which came up which was called the gastric plication and gastric plication was nothing but, but we were doing a sleeve gastrectomy with the help of suturing, laparoscopic suturing, but it was given up because of the complications. But uh, when we gave up, the endoscopist picked it up and they started doing the endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty. They give the name gastroplasty because uh, they are not exactly removing it. Here again the principle is they do suturing from inside the greater curvature side and the lesser curvature side, the anterior wall, the posterior wall and this device is used, this special device is made for that and the idea is to make a sleeve like small stomach like this. But this was the original concept, but people who have done it maximum nowadays they are leaving behind little bit of fundus and even their sleeve is not complete. I will show you the video. Again, this is the principle and this is how the procedure is done. The marking is done on the anterior wall, the posterior wall. The suture is taken on the anterior wall, then greater curvature, then posterior wall again anterior wall, greater curvature and posterior wall and after that it is tied endoscopically and divided. And this is a special device they are using. So this is the needle and this is the hook. So this marking is done to make sure that which area has to go where, which part has to be sutured where. So they mark, now this hook goes inside the stomach wall and bring it up and then this needle passes through. So, the bite is taken. So, one bite is taken on the anterior wall and then the another bite will be taken on the posterior wall and in between they go through the greater curvature. So, that is one stitch and then the next stitch will be taken. And once they have taken two sutures, they will tie it off and divide. So, they start from the antrum and come up gradually. Again, they bring out the, bring in the stomach wall and take a bite. So, this is called endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty and uh, currently limited data available which suggests that it reduces the stomach volume. So, by reducing the stomach volume, it helps the patient in eating less and early satiety and patient gets benefit of weight loss and correction of morbidities to some extent. This procedure is again being divided, uh, be, being done by surgeon only and this surgeon has been doing bariatric surgery also and then he is doing this endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty also. See this is the antrum and pylorus and from here the sleeve gastroplasty starts till this level and on fundus, the part of the fundus they leave behind for accommodation of the food. So, when they see at 3 months, about 6 out of 9 patients had fully intact endoscopic sleeve and partially intact endoscopic sleeve at 3 months in 3 out of 9 patients. The trial was 
only with 25 patients with mean BMI of 38.5. The procedure time recorded mean was 80 minutes. They did not report any major complications. Maximum weight loss in first month when patient was on liquid diet. At one year about 54 uh, percent uh, excess weight loss. Sample size, however, the sample size is quite low. It is only 25 patients and there was no control group kept. So, right now it is not being indicated in each and every center to go for endoscopic sleeve, but the time will come that with few modification this may become one more procedure for endoscope for bariatric uh, bariatric patients to reduce the weight. And this endoscopic procedures come up because many patients of morbid obesity they do not want to undergo bariatric surgery, they do not want to take that much risk. So, that they want to have some sort of endoscopic procedure where the life and danger is not much. Another procedure and this is the last procedure is called the aspire assist. This is a recently launched and recently approved by US FDA also. Basically, you have to put in a peg tube like tube device. I presume that uh, all the fellows and delegates are aware of percutaneous endoscopic gastrotomy tube placement which we are putting. This is a similar device which they put endoscopically with 6 mm diameter and then after having a lunch or a dinner or a meal they remove up to 30 percent of the calories directly into toilet from this pack tube. So, the person who invented this just thought that why, why do not we simply put in a pack tube and remove the things, let the patient eat and we remove. And so, patient gets the pleasure of eating, but then it is removed. So, the calorie intake is reduced. Now, here this is the can we have voice sound? So, basically, after eating, the patient goes to toilet, brings out this kit from his uh, uh, purse, and connect it to the this pack tube. Then he starts sucking out the food material. This valve is open, so the food material comes out and goes into the waste. Then they change the lever and push in water. So, the water goes in inside and they wash out the remaining food material. They do it several times, so that the stomach is almost empty and replaced by this water. So, very little they, they say that only 30 percent of the calories will be absorbed. And it also requires lifestyle modification. The patients are also taught to increase the chewing so that the, the food particles are so small so that it can be aspirated through that pack tube. The, this will increase the milk consumption time and this will reduce the calorie consumption. By this three mechanism, Patient is also advised to take nutritious diet, the community support will be there, limited snacks and because the patient is eating, patient does not feel that he is not eating, patient is eating, but it is removed. There is weight loss which in their study it was comparable to surgical results. No serious complications because obviously this is simply a packed tube. We are removing the 
food particles. It is a simple procedure, 15 minute procedure under uh, conscious sedation, outpatient procedure and in that series they had high success. It is intended for long term use, suppose you use it for 6 months and remove, then obviously patient will regain the weight. So, it has to be there for longer period of time and obviously the patients are interested in this product because it does not involve surgery, they are able to eat what they want to and still they are losing weight. This product has been approved by US FDA in uh, June 2016 and since then it has been, it is being practiced in various centers across USA. It is still early whether this will be a successful procedure after 5 years or 10 years, but this kind of attempts bring out new things in market and eventually we are going away from the surgery to the endoscopic procedures. So, we being the surgeon we need to learn endoscopy, it is useful as you have seen in bariatric patients either to treat the complications of surgery or to watch the patient or to do endoscopic procedures which will eventually help the patient to reduce the weight. Thank you so much. So, we will go ahead with next talk if there are no uh, questions and uh, come back to discussion if there are any questions. Once again thank you very much uh, Dr. Gani Bhaskar Rao for inviting uh, us here and uh, giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Now. Now, I request Dr. Zamir Pasha sir to give his presentation. Yeah. Okay. The chief pattern, the architect and the conceiver and the creator of this magnificent facility, Dr. Gani Bhaskar Rao, our dynamic secretary, Dr. Sanjay Das Gupta, vice president, Dr. Sunil Poppet, our dynamic Govindraj, Satish Mira, the convener of the FIGS course, Dr. Kanagavel, who is a master brain behind all these courses, Dr. Samir, we have been enjoying your hospitality since this morning and all the distinguished fellow Sathya Pradesh Sarkar, he is just walking in, please come in. And uh, what has made endoscopy the choice of the your armamentarium in this decade is that we have, uh, have a renewed interest into it endoscope and the IAGES itself is the Indian Association of Gastrointestinal Endosurgeons which also includes both the inside and outside of the hollow viscous which we are dealing with. So, here my topic given today to me is foreign bodies from the upper GA tract and I am sorry, where is the pointer son? This one pointer sir. This one, okay. You name it, we have got it, everything. And so, these are either the blunt objects, the sharp pointed objects, long objects, food, bolus, round objects, blunt and salt, coin, button, batteries, magnets. The sharp ones are needle, toothpick, bone, safety pin, glass pieces. The long objects are string, card and the hard objects are toothbrush. 
cutlery, screwdriver, pen, pencil, food bolus with uh, without bones and packets of illegal drugs of course. Wherever you have airports especially in Trichy in my place where there is an international airport you get a lot of these people. So what are the symptoms? You have blood in saliva, uh, scoffing, drooling, dysphagia and odinophagia, failure to thrive, fever, food refusal, foreign body sensation in throat, gagging, irritability, pain in neck, throat or chest, recurrent aspiration, pneumonia, respiratory distress, strider, tachypnea or dyspnea, vomiting and wheezing. And what is the overview of these devices? Yes, we have to have blunt objects with we can retrieve with grasping forceps, retrieval graspers, polypectomy snare, basket, retrieval net. The sharp pointed objects of course you have to have the again the grasping forceps, polypectomy, snare, basket, retrieval net, transparent cap, latex rubber hood I will be showing you later on. Long objects, polypectomy, snare and basket. Foot bowlers you need to again have the grasping forceps, retrieval graspers, polypectomy, snare, basket, retrieval net. And these are the retrieval graspers and the grasping forceps. The baskets and snare you must have been using since this morning and I hope you would have not only gone in and tried to do all these maneuvers inside. So here you need to have a room with tools here, an endoscopist here, the anesthesiologist and the imaging. This is how this room has to be planned and made. So we need to grade system for rating the quality of evidence for guidelines. We need to have high quality research is unlikely to change our confidence estimative effect because in any emergency it is your common sense and your experience and expertise tells you how you have to go about in removing this. So the classification of foreign bodies is that it is either radio density, foreign body can be mostly identified on radiography and cannot be identified for example food bolus. There are true foreign bodies like non-food objects, steak bones, food bolus, chicken bones, wood, plastic, glass, thin metal objects cannot be identified by the radiography. The object and now the timing of endoscopic intervention in foreign body injections is emergent within 2 hours battery. But at late, the latest within 6 hours, urgent, emergent, urgent within 24 hours, non-urgent within 72 hours. Anyway, this has got to be done as early as possible ASAP and battery it can be either an esophagus, stomach, small bowel this is emergent that is within 2 hours and mostly it is the small kids who have this. They ingest this batteries that you lay out from your either the toys or your phones or your other electronic objects and once it goes in even within half an hour when I have gone in I have seen it become totally black totally black and the magnet this is in esophagus or in stomach or small bowel these are all urgent one that is within 6 hours you need to go in. The sharp pointed foreign body is again in esophagus is an emergent one that is within 2 hours because it can cause more further damage and blunt and small foreign body less than 2 and 2.5 centimeters into esophagus, stomach, small bowel, urgent and this if you have gone into small bowel it can be non-urgent but anyway you need to go within 72 hours. The blunt and medium sized foreign body that is more than 2 and 2.5 centimeters either in esophagus, stomach, small bowel this is urgent. If it is more than 5 to 6 centimeters it could be in esophagus, stomach again this is urgent, foot bolus it can be stuck up in esophagus and it is urgent if without symptoms or without the complete obstruction. And these are the ones as you see, but this well this is an interesting case. This is a 24 year old gentleman, we were not talking about urgent, emergent, non-urgent whereas this is a man who was going to various consultants for 2 years with chest pain. He had undergone every other cardiac examinations, echocardiograms, everything except a chest x-ray and endoscope. In the endoscope I, this is the finding and when I showed him this he was 
almost broke into tears. He said, Sir, this is the ring that I have been searching since my childhood. My mother, I swallowed it. And you know what we have to do? This is the one. So what I did, so I put in my straight laparoscope forceps, cut all across and then took it because this cannot, will not come out with our regular uh, scopes that we have here. So that is the way you have to work it out. So in uh, the medical students as you have done all your uh, undergraduate, you will still remember, you make common diagnosis, you will always be right. You make rare diagnosis, you will be rarely right. And this is the one that you had to grasp and then take it out. Needle, you have to be very, very careful in taking it out. And so also, all foreign bodies. So, the timing of endoscopy for ingested foreign bodies is the most important one, including the disc batteries, sharp pointed objects, and as I told you about the emergent ones. The true foreign bodies, all these have to be kept in mind. And uh, as I told you, these are the ones that mostly surgeons are called to do in government institutions in most of the ports of call, either airports or the seaports. And uh, this is the foreign body endoscopy experience in a university based hospital where you get all these emergencies where there is an emergency room. 0 to 18, about 10, that is the most common. How about 26 to 45, 17? Now, you will not know, there are people who always keep a pencil or a certain object, it is just a habit with them, almost it is an addiction. Looking at our Android phone, their iPhones, or PCs, they always have that. They swallow it and sleep with it. And then of course, the prisoners, the psychiatric diseases, psychosis, depression, PTSD, dementia. All these are being found in these numbers. What are others? The narcotic ones, of course. Inpatient admissions for this to EGD has been 24, 41, 10, 36, 48, more than 48, 7. In a country like India, where the emergency is decided by the time he comes from the place of occurrence to the hospital. So, this is where we lack in time. People do come in late after foreign body. Again, the timing of the ingestion, whether it is the, the dead of the night or in a daytime and the location and the transport. So, operating room, the endoscopy suit, emergency room, all these should be adjacent to each other. If not so, then you are in soup. And now that you are now undertaking all this, you will be in a real great stride to take in all these cases as they come in, because this should be always done on an emergency basis. Now, I will not go into classification of the emergent, urgent, non-urgent, but any foreign body inside is if brought within two hours, is an emergency for you. Please go ahead and do a scoping. And anesthesia, if possible, GA, depending on the stomach congestion, and uh, or even propofol anesthesia, and moderate anesthesia with the deep sedation, moderation sedation. All that you need to tell the patient is because you need the patient to be a little bit conscious also. That is why you need a little bit of sedation. And the endoscopic tools are snare, rat tooth forceps, roth retrieval net, and the accessory endoscopy or over tube for a short object, a hood also for a sharp object, and a two channel scope where you need to light and water to go through one and the, your instrument to go through the other. So, this is the over tube that is used on foreign bodies, goddess over tube. And what we do here, the latex rubber hood used to prevent mucosal injury during retrieval of a scalpel blade. It does occur quite uh, frequently when as you know when you are doing your laparoscopy, you want to enlarge a little bit of your uh, port and you put in this, the blade comes off. And however much you try, maybe in an obese patient, it might elude all your intro, in, in your inspection, your palpation, all that. Then you will have to necessarily take him to a see arm, see it and then remove it. That is how it does occur. Thank you very much. Thank you for the important button. Now, I see a lot of uh, uh, set of curious onlookers here. 
this is not the way it should be. This is a structured program, structured only for you. If there are no doubts, uh, you know what it means. Either it means nothing or you know everything. So, how many of you are doing endoscopy as such? The fellows who have come here, no, no, not the faculty. Hardly 20 percent. Good. We have uh, master endoscopies here right from Satyada to Satishmeda to Sunil to Govindraj, who we have been all collaborating together. There are so many times we have had complications like uh, once Govindraj and myself we are uh, trying to remove a CBD stone, we put in a snare and what happened was the snare after the sto stone was so hard as he was screwing down to take out the snare, the snare broke up. And this is the place where the patient was in obstructed jaundice, the stone was quite hard, this broke. Now what to do? Now he, uh, the free end was dangling inside the stomach. So anyway, he was so experienced that he was able to guide a stent through that into the CBD and uh, get the patient out of obstructed jaundice. What happened was at that time, so in my hospital with a lithotriptor, here is a place for lithotripsy in CBD because the snare was there. Well, we know that the stone is within the snare. So we gave lithotriptor and slowly broke the stone for about 15 days. And on the third week, we were all ready to go inside to retrieve that broken piece inside because we left a foreign body. This is not an emergent case. That's what I told you. I will tell you later about that case. And uh, when we were doing this case, we went inside and because we had done lithotriptor, the stone got broke, the, we have, because the stent was there, the CBD got dilated and slowly because of the peristaltic movements, that snare eased itself and was dangling inside the duodenum. So we had now prepared our theta for removal of this endoscopically, failing which we wanted to convert into a laparotomy, do a cholidocotomy, remove the entire thing, close it, come out with a tube, T-tube. When this happened, so that was the time, we were so happy, everyone broke into applause and of course it is party time. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Sainde Gupta, sir. Good evening. I think this is the last lecture, no? Huh? Huh. So, uh, this is a very boring subject, the energy sources in endoscopy or uh, in laparoscopy, this has been modified, uh, but we are using uh, energy sources for any procedure no nowadays and some amount of physics, some amount of conception is necessary because we have got a lot of misconceptions about the energy sources. So, what are the classifications of an energy sources in energy sources, both in uh, laparoscopy and in endoscopy? They are electrical, ultrasonic, laser and mechanical. We have a very common term, we say cauterize it. This is always in the OT, bring the cautery. What is a cautery? There is a two types of thing. One is an electrocautery and another is an electrosurgery. What we use normally in the OT is the electrosurgery. Electrocautery is heating up any object, metallic object and press it, burn the thing and that becomes cauterized. So, you can, it can be a metallic object or any object which you can press on a bleeding vessel or bleeding uh, uh, a surface and burn it. In electrosurgery, what happens is the electrical current passes through the tissue and that heats up and produces, produces 
cauterization. So, one is electrocautery and another is electrosurgery. What we use is electrosurgery. And what is the unit? The unit is a radio frequency generator. It generates high frequency currents which induces ionic vibration but no movement. Ionic vibration generates intracellular heat but no muscle nerve depolarization. Power settings are in watts, that is watts is in physics volts into amps as you remember, if you remember your physics. Intracellular heat can cause boiling plus explosion which is the cut and or dehydration that is desiccation and coagulation and or fire that is a fulguration. So, in the machine we have two sides, you have all seen one is the blue side, sorry, one is the blue side and the other is the yellow side. The blue side is the coagulation, activation you must remember is by the blue pedal, settings are blue side in the blue side only, modes are monopolar, APC or bipolar and outlets are separate for monopolar and bipolar. The yellow side is always a cut, activation is by the yellow pedal, settings yellow side only, modes are pure cut, blend cut with several modes with different coagulation cut ratios and the outlet is usually single. So, what are the types of electrosurgery? We have a monopolar that is coagulation, argon plasma or non-contact, contact coagulation and cut, pure cut and blend cut and then we have bipolar. So, what are the electrocautery waveforms? There are two types of waveforms that is the coagulation and the cut waveforms. So, if you can see So, if you can see this is a cut waveform, it is a continuous wave with the peak is less. In coagulation, it is an intermittent wave, but the peak voltage is high. What is the physical process of coagulation? As we said, slow heating of the tissue in close contact, then fluid loss with bubbling, then steam release with cooling, then slow heating of the tissue in close contact. The effect of coagulation is hemostasis. Best instrument is a micro bipolar, there is no uh, uh, fulguration with a micro bi uh, bi bipolar in instruments. Alternative is a monopolar coagulation at the rate of 20 to 30 watts or blend cut with high crest at 20 to 40 watts. If setting is too low, it may desiccate and be uh, too deep. If too high, the monopolar may give deep fulguration. So, here is the coagulation. See the can you see the, uh, it, the electrode which is in contact with the tissue, it is with contact with the tissue and the it has to have a good contact and deep coagulation spreads radially.
this. Now monopolar, there, are other, there is a, another mode that is called a pure cut. It is a continuous sinusoidal wave without cooling of period, causes very rapid heating with cell explosion and formation of steam and sparks. It gives little coagulation, there is no desiccation and current is a very low peak voltage. Then there are the blend cuts. This is a sinus wave 25 to 50 percent of the time, allows for some cooling of period, gives less cell explosion that is cut than pure cut and moderate desiccation plus fulguration and coagulation, has high crest than pure cut at same energy setting as a higher peak voltage hence can fulgurate more. Different levels of blend cut are set by the manufacturer. So, responds only to the cut setting and loose contact facilitates the blend process. So, points to remember in general at identical power settings coagulation currents cause deep, deeper tissue injury than cut, yellow plus blue is not green. So, remember coagulation that is blue unit is completely independent of cut that is the yellow unit, power setting in one side does not affect the other and blend cut current is a feature of the cut that is the yellow side unit. The degree of blending depends on the chosen mode, endo cut versus blend 1, blend 2, different companies have different settings. Now we come to a bipolar cautery. It usually gives low energy, has two or small active electrodes very close to each other that is the active and the return electrode, does not use an indifferent plate. There is a risk of explosion with flammable gases less depth of injury and it is excellent for desiccation and coagulation at low settings. This is excellent for hemostasis. So, that is how the bipolar current traverses. In bipolar, active output and patient return functions are both accomplished at the site of surgery. Current path is confined to tissue grasp between the tine of the forceps. Because the return function is performed by one of one time of the forceps, no patient return electrode is required. It is a safer than monopolar as complications related to grounding pads and other implanted devices like pacemakers are eliminated. There is technical difficulty in developing polypectomy stairs and sphincterotomies for, for uh, sphincterotomies, so not gain much acceptance in endoscopy. Positive and negative poles need to be separate but remain close to each other which is done by non-conductive elements making it a cumbersome instrument. Limited devices are available and are more expensive also. Recently bipolar needle knife has been developed for endoscopic submucosal resections. In GI endoscopy bipolar is usually mostly for hemostasis. It is ideal for coagulation that is sealing of vessels with application of electrosurgical heat and contact pressure. Low voltage bipolar output and narrow power to the impedance curve is recommended. Avoid use of an electrosurgical unit designed for open and laparoscopic surgery. You have must have a dedicated unit. A setting of 15 to 20 watts is, is adequate for control of non varicial GI readings and application of probe for longer period of time promotes deeper coagulation when targeting larger vessels like bleeding peptic ulcers. So, that is uh, that is a bipolar probe which is being used. You can see there are two, there are two and in between there is a substance which makes uh, use, use as a resistance. What is the, what are the complications of electro cautery use? There is a grounding failure, alternative site injury, insulation failure, tissue injury at distal site, sparking, direct coupling, capacitive coupling, surgical glove injury, explosion. Now, so, you have to be careful about all these things that you have to know that these things might occur. Now, in a snare polypectomy, the use of electrosurgery is not standardized. In a survey done of 189 endoscopies, so endoscopies they showed 46 percent used pure coag. 46 percent used blend and 3 percent used pure cut. Cold or hot biopsy forceps were used for polyps of 1 to 3 millimeter in size. Electrosurgery near resection used for polyps of 7 to 9 millimeter in size and 
four percent varied their current during polypectomy. Starts with a cut and ends with a coag, or starts with a coag, ends with a cut. In most studies, descriptions are qualitative, that is, blend or cut or something like that, but not quantitative, that is, how much duty cycle is being used. Different companies have different blend settings, so comparisons are very difficult. In most studies, pure coag or blended is used. All immediate bleeding was while using blended. All delayed bleeding occurred while using coag. Endocut or pure cut gives better histopathology. Pure cutting current may lead to immediate post-op bleeding. Overuse of due coag may lead to delayed bleeding and transmural burn syndrome. Current density is highest at the point of maximum constriction and under the snare wire. When you see blanching, limit use of current transmission so that the heat transmitted through the stock of the polyp to bowel wall is limited. Tightly strangling a base of the polyp with snare wire is wrong. Mechanical pressure will not prevent bleeding. Often the wire cold slices the polyp or there is inadequate coag due to sudden rush of the wire closing. You suddenly pull it and it just closes before you realize anything and encircle the polyp loosely, start energy source, then gently and smoothly close the wire using blend at a lower setting. So that is the snare, you have, must have used it, seen it now, just snare it, gently close it and then apply the energy source. And in a sessile polyp, you elevate the polyp with a gel fusion and you use a resection using a needle knife. Now hot biopsy, monopolar hot biopsy forceps are used for simultaneous co coagulation and biopsy of polyps. In spite of manufacturers recommendation for cut mode initially and then use coag, most people use only coag. Use is now limited due to adverse reports of higher rates of transmural damage, perforation and bleeding. Some studies find it safe for diminutive polyps. HP evaluation is more difficult after a hot biopsy. Hot biopsy forceps present a larger electrode area to tissue than snare wear resulting in spread of current in larger area. The waveform mode, the power setting, time of application, volume of tissue grasp, degree of tenting of the submucosal layer, thickness of underlying tissue and the angle of forceps application all are very important and is using a hot biopsy. So these are the hot biopsy forceps you must have seen by this time. Then we come to sphincterotomy. What are the factors influencing? There is a well length, choice of the waveform, force on the sphincterotome. Pure cut are more likely to produce bleeding, pure coag increase the risk of pancreatitis by wide, wider thermal tissue injury, local edema resulting in pancreatic, pancreatic outflow obstruction. Most used waveforms having more cut and less coag. You have to, you, some people use an endocut in sphincterotomy and the endocut waveform is used microprocessor based impedance feedback mechanism which automatically set power and voltage controlled waveform cycling in intervals from 190 VP to pre-selected 200 to 600 VP. It produces more controlled cut with less chance of immediate bleeding. No difference has been seen between endocut and blended waveform in respect to post-procedure complications. So these are the different settings, how it affects and uh, these are the forceps. You have seen the sphincterotomy forceps. Now lastly, we come to the argon plasma coagulator. Argon is an inert gas, non-combustible. It is easily ionized. It is used with monopolar to produce fulguration. Electrical current ionizes argon, which makes a more efficient pathway between tissue and electrodes. It is not used in laparoscopy, but used in endoscopy. It is used primarily for superficial hemostasis and tissue ablation. Argon gas becomes electrically conductive with energy provided with special electrosurgical units. Ionized pathway propagate in chain reaction and non-ionized gas outside the argon beam does not conduct energy to the tissue. 
there is an electric arc which enters the tissue then it creates a mat matrix which produces coagulation and it produces a stable H curve. So, that is the argon plasma coagulation that is the APC probe you can see there is a painting sort of painting that has been done for a bleeding surface and lastly I thank you from West Bengal, Kolkata, you have to know the basics, you have to toil hard, it is hard practice and knowledge which makes you a good surgeon and an endoscopist. Thank you very much. Questions? Yes. I require your registration number. Oh, the four one four one two WB. Four one four one two WB. So this is the format. Okay. And photo should be there. Okay. We get it in the photo. I wanted to check you, check with you, because most of them, most of us are surgeons. Do you advise a separate diatomy for endoscopy, or you mean to say the same gadget will do justice for this now as well? Actually, it is recommended. Government as we will say, it's recommended that for endoscopy you have a separate unit. Yeah, definitely you need a separate unit for uh, endoscopy. Now the high-end uh, uh, diatomy machines are uh, versatile. That that can be used for laparoscopy also because they have got the blended current and in the blended current uh, you have got a mode called the endo mode. The endo mode contains uh, two kind of uh, mode, endo mode I and endo mode Q. Endo mode I is used for the ERCP and Q is for used for the polypectomy. Their settings are totally different. And the same diathermy can be used for laparoscopy also. They got a vessel sealing device and they got a harmonic also, that's the ultrasonic also involved in that. So, it is prudent that we system for an interventional uh, thing. Sir, uh, do we need to keep a earth pad or uh, we don't need to keep an earth pad, sir? Endoscopic, because you have been always talking about the monopolar. Uh, 
so make sure you place an earth pad prior to doing a procedure because most of us tend to forget uh, that point surgery you place an earth pad now all the higher generation uh, electro surgical devices they tell you the earth pad is not placed it properly won't it won't work <laughs> nowadays you don't need that gel thing you can apply it anywhere and they are having dual pads we have uh, in our hospital we have bought a uh, stores instrument stores stores that there be it has got this impedance thing you know it will stop coagulating however much you press because it uh, safety it will stop coagulating as well i want to hear from you always uh, the urologists are concerned when you are doing underwater cutting diathermies don't work or you need special diathermy because i am sure all the bleeders and all these things are going to be a wet field especially when you are going to inject saline and other things do we need to use the same modes what we use or underwater cutting we need to use a different mode they have got separate modes for each they have got separate modes about 12 or 14 modes are there you have to select which mode you are doing for laparoscopy endoscopy endocart uh, everything has a separate mode which is given there you have to just choose the mode change it and uh, as well we are always concerned about the charge coupling and capacitance in uh, uh, nowadays it has become less previously we used to see after the any surgery a big big burn in the thighs uh, the patient is most concerned about the burn than the actual surgery but nowadays you don't see it because it will not work if the earth thing is not proper it will not work okay and uh, believe we need to take extra care in using an endoscope and along with that do you need to have any protection for the scope because you are using a wet and an electricity every every, every time whatever endoscope or whatever laparoscopic thing you have to be very sure about the insulation that is the most important thing insulation you have to be very 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 careful you have to check it every week you should check it thank you sir
good evening everyone. Uh, in the meantime we have some instructions from the organizers uh, number one after the exams are over we will have a brief inaugural session from the GSL medical college group and then we are going to have a small break for coffee and snack in the adjacent room where we had the lunch and uh, all of us all of us together and all of you together we want to come down the dental college uh, entrance uh, sir as chairman sir has arranged for a special photo session for everyone uh, with the professional photographer and from then on uh, we can break to the banquets this is the plan for the day people who have completed exam interviews for today those who have been told that your process is over can refrain from exams from tomorrow people who have not completed the interview today for non exam category and people who are taking the exam category will be interviewed morning from 9 o'clock onwards so you will volunteers will call you one by one so that you continue to attend the program either in the simulation or in the lecture hall don't worry you need not go to the uh, hall and exam hall and wait you will be called to be so don't worry if by 11 o'clock if you have not uh, called for the examination please inform one of the organizing volunteers any doubts you have regarding this Thank you. All the best. Finish your exam. GSL Smart Lab Simulation GSL Smart Lab Simulation Modules for Advanced Research and Training Laboratory A world class medical and surgical training platform aims at remodeling the approach towards patient care in India GSL Smart Lab is an interdisciplinary state of the art virtual medical setup that allows medical and nursing students physical therapy students community EMTs and social activists to practice clinical procedures in a safe learning environment in the clinical simulation lab trainees can practice on mannequins whose complex circuitry causes them to react as if they were human it has been noticed that students are lacking the practical skills required for their practice or rather on the real patients so that's why we try to recreate all the theoretical modules into a practical set
question i try to simulate it in a real sure. time and try to simulate it in a real time knowledge, environment improves their that gains their knowledge and also decreases improves their error, confidence and, and also setups. decreases the error clinical simulation the laboratory setups. the clinical simulation together. laboratory brings together individuals groups and teams for hands on learning experiences enhanced by the integration of standardized patients and advanced technology in settings that reflect actual trauma operating room inpatient and ambulatory settings ee virtual simulation lab anadi oka new concept anadi new concept endukante manta mundu man patient l meeda manam operation try chesevalu idi anathikal endukante we on try no the it doesn't know the technique you are trying and the patient very difficult and a very hard to patient అందుకని ఈ వర్చువల్ టెక్నాలజీ అనేది వచ్చిన తర్వాత లాస్ట్ ఫోర్ టు ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ నుంచి దీని మీద బాగా వర్కౌట్ చేసి నేషనల్ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ సో మెనీ సెంటర్స్ ని డిస్కస్ చేసి ఫైనల్ గా ఈ సెంటర్ ని వరల్డ్ క్లాస్ సెంటర్ తయారు చేసాం జిఎస్ఎల్ ఇస్ ఎ ఫస్ట్ లెబొరేటరీ ఇన్ ద కంట్రీ విత్ ల్యాబ్ మెంటర్ అల్ట్రాసౌండ్ మెంటర్ జిఐ బ్రాంకో మెంటర్ యాంజియో మెంటర్ ఆర్తో మెంటర్ అన్ ఆటోమేట్ టేబుల్ అడ్వాన్స్డ్ స్కిల్ ట్రైనింగ్ మానిక్వెన్స్ ఎక్సెట్రా ఆల్ అండర్ వన్ రూఫ్ GSL Smart Lab is founded on the same core principles of GSL Education Society and providing world class facilities to general public. As such, GSL Smart Lab provides basic training from anatomy to advanced laparoscopic procedures and robotic surgery. GSL has added an automated table, an electronic virtual dissection and reconstruction table for teaching basic science and procedural skills as well as clinical evaluation at the undergraduate and postgraduate medical education levels as simulation becomes increasingly prevalent in medical education more simulation training devices will be added to this lab and adequate provision has been made for them in india it is first of its kind Mentor. 3D systems provide the most comprehensive surgical simulation training for learners of all levels. The state of the art lab mentor simulation provides the widest array of hands-on laparoscopic training available across multiple disciplines. GI Bronco Mentor The GI Bronco Mentor platform offers the training of both GI endoscopy and flexible bronchoscopy. It provides a comprehensive solution for the flexible bronchoscopy training needs of pulmonary and critical care physicians, anesthesiologists and interventional pulmonologists as well as for the training of gastrointestinal upper and lower endoscopic procedures arthro mentor arthro mentor is an advanced arthroscopic training simulator As the most effective tool for arthroscopic surgical skills acquisition, the system reduces training time and considerably improves the learning curve of the complex surgery techniques with 3D images and haptic sensation to allow users to learn key aspects of the procedures. Angiomentor simulators provide hands-on practice of endovascular procedures performed under fluoroscopy in the cath lab. Interventional suit or
or an OR. It provides a complete individual and team training solution to learners of all levels and across disciplines. US Mentor A cross-speciality solution for ultrasound training. The US Mentor is a high-end medical simulator for the training of ultrasound-related examinations and interventions. This mentor offers a multidisciplinary, realistic, hands-on training for the ever-growing utilization of ultrasound in medicine, especially at point-of-care setting. Skills Lab CPR Training Mannequins provides realistic adult CPR and infant CPR training and other core skills for BLS training. Advanced Skill Trainer Mannequin focuses on the core skills of ACLS training. Operated with a SIM pad, it provides comprehensive instructor to student debriefing and documentation of key events along with instructions on first aid and extrication. Wet Lab Another unique feature of GSL Smart Lab is Wet Lab where students are trained in surgical procedures on animal models or tissues. This is the final phase of simulation training before he or she is permitted to operate on patients in operation theater, equipped with latest equipment and instructions, completely sterilized. As part of our social responsibility, we train social workers, policemen and corporate employees in basic and advanced cardiopulmonary life support. It is a moment of great pride when we hear stories of how these people go out into general public and save lives. GSL Smart Lab is extending simulation training not only to medical but also to dental, physiotherapy, nursing and other paramedical technicians. The management of the college is extending basic life support training to police personnel, social workers, automobile workers and ASHA workers. I hope that not only GSL students but also participants and interested doctors from all over India and world come to our smart lab and experience the simulation world. The laboratory is open to all medical colleges in Andhra Pradesh for skill training. Advanced training in simulation skills is also extended to clinical technicians of other states as well.
Brigadier Dr. TVSP Murthy, Chief Advisor EFI AGES, Medical Superintendent of GSL General Hospital. Dr. Ganibaskar Rao, Chairman, GSL Group of Institutions. So kindly take your seat. I also request, request Dr. B. Krishnara sir to come on to the dais. We'll start our program with a prayer song by Harika, Jyotsna and Harita. Shri Ganeshaya Dhimahi 
चतुराय गान प्राणाय गानात्मने गानोत्सुकाय गान मत्ताय गानोत्सुक मनसे गुरुपूजिताय गुरुदैवताय गुरुकुलत्सायिने गुरुविक्रमाय गुह्य प्रवराय गुरवे गुल गुरवे गुरुदैत्य कलक्षेत्रे गुरुधर्म सुधाराध्याय गुरुपुत्र पवित्रात्रे गुरु मातंड खंड काया गीत साराय गीत तत्वाय गीत गोत्राय धीमहि गुड़ गल्फाय गंध मट्टाय गोजय प्रयाय धीमहि गुणादीताय गुणादीशाय गुण प्रविष्टाय धीमहि एकदंताय वक्रतुंडाय गौरी तनयाय धीमहि गजेशानाय बालचंद्राय श्री गणेशाय धीमहि एकदंताय वक्रतुंडाय गौरी तनयाय धीमहि गजेशानाय बालचंद्राय श्री गणेशाय धीमहि Thank you so much. Now I request the guest to lamp to do the lamp lighting. Sorry. I request all the faculty members to join me. Now I request Dr. R.M. Shekhar, Joint Organizing Chairman to address the gathering. Good evening everyone. And uh, I thank everyone for providing me the opportunity to talk a few things. Uh, of course, uh, last two days uh, uh, you have seen a uh, piece of uh, events in the sim, this smart lab. And uh, I think the beginners are now ready for the takeoff. And uh, I few advice I can give to the beginners is that you have just entered into the that end to high cooperation and coordination and you should continue with this never stop this if you continue this you will have a good future in endoscopy the other thing is uh, when once you start you start with a uh, simple procedures and uh, there should not be any complications in the beginning and uh, that will lead to further progress and you will have a confidence once you do few procedures without any complication. If there is any problem, you can take the advice of uh, some of your seniors colleagues in your, in your place and that will help you a lot. That's what uh, I did during my initial stages and uh, I, I, I got the experience. Now I have an experience of about uh, 5000 endoscopies and of course I have come across few complications which are inevitable in the uh, process of this uh, endoscopy and uh, these complications you should be able to manage as a surgical uh, 
man, you are always have uh, the experience of managing the complications, and uh, you should uh, you should uh, able to manage it. But uh, try to prevent the complication as far as possible. That is that will help you in your career. This uh, technology is improving like anything, and uh, modern days uh, it is going at a very rapid rapid pace. But uh, only thing is. you have to get experience to gain that uh, advanced technologies and if you continue that definitely you will be one among the dignitaries on the dais and few experienced uh, endosurgeons and uh, and uh, endoscopists so these are the few advice i can give and uh, i think you will continue in your uh, uh, field of endoscopy and i wish you all the best in your future experiences thank you thank you yeah. thank you sir now i request brigadier dr yv sharma sir chief patron to address the gathering honorable president dr jamil pasham office office bearers and the faculty of aags delegates my colleagues and our patron and chairman of the gsl education institutions dr gandhi baskar rao the at the outset let me thank aags for reposing faith in us to conduct this workshop fellowship program and the cme um, our laboratory is the youngest probably of the lot in the country but it has made its mark both at national and international levels technology has changed the way we practice medicine and the way we teach medical students gone were the days when the human beings were uh, used as the learning tools by the medical profession the latest vision document of the mca visualizes to set about leaving the animal experiments set about training on modules and virtual trainings in consonance with this gsl educational institutions has started the smart lab and in doing so we proved to be the leaders for all the educational institutions in the country <coughs> creating a facility is not good enough and it needs to be utilized fully for reaping the benefits out of it we have started organizing training programs workshops hands on training not only for our postgraduate students but also to the sister institutions and it has been happening right from its inception we have uh, tied up with lss the netherlands and some of the professional organizations and universities to run these courses <coughs> latest being the iags gas participation in conducting these fellowships i thank sincerely all of you for having utilized the facility and look forward to its continued utilization in the years to come i will be failing in my duty if i don't place on record the outstanding enthusiasm zeal and drive of dr gani bhaskar rao who has not who who has never looked back once he has committed to creating this laboratory and he has shown to the world 
that what can be done in a uh, the so called backward town of andhra pradesh and uh, in the years to come I'm, i i foresee this becomes the center for uh, medical tourism and education for andhra pradesh thank you very much for giving me this opportunity for giving the institution the opportunity to conduct this workshop thank you Thank you, sir. Now I request Brigadier Dr. T. V. S. P. Murthy, Chief Advisor, to address the gathering. Good evening, everyone. The luminaries on the stage, the invited delegates, the faculty, the student. who are enrolled for this and those who have been witnessing since last two days the feast of programs which are in being held at our place i'm quite amazed to see the interest and the number of delegates who have been enrolled for this i'd like to make it on record that this particular entity of surgical endoscopy has come to stay and replace the previous gold standard techniques which have been described which will only become only a rescue measures as and when things don't work out as as far as endoscopy is concerned i'm an anesthetist by profession i'm afraid that in the coming time my role will be limited because most of the surgical procedures are being done either in the minimally invasive and or through the endoscopy for the betterment of the patient care in these two days i'm sure that the delegates who have been participating and who have put their hands on have learned a lot we have lined up adequate number of case for everyone to put in their hands be it the upper or the lower gi endoscopy <coughs> and give you a milieu of wonderful experience on your coordination between your eye and the hand i am sure that tomorrow's uh, endoscopy uh, things also will be going on as per the expectations this is a wonderful place and i invite everyone to have the look around before you leave this place and um, i hope that being the core committee in charge that we would, we are able to look after you people in these two days and made you comfortable as far as the hospitality is concerned and in case if there are some drawbacks please excuse us and pardon us we have put our heart and soul into it in trying to make you people as comfortable as possible and go back with pleasant memories back to your places of work enriched with the knowledge of the endoscopy workshop over here i thank the great personalities and the luminaries in the field of endoscopy who have come all the way taking the time to be over here and assist the younger crowd thanks once again and this was all possible because of the <coughs> determined grit by our chairman that it has to happen and we know how we had to run around to get the you know the marks met i'm sure that you all will have a great stay thanks a lot and enjoy the conference thank you thank you sir now i request dr ishan murthy course convener to address the gathering dear president professor bkr and all my ages family members and professor gani baskar rao and all the gsl family members and all the fellowship delegates ladies and gentlemen it's indeed has been two days of both academic gastronomic and cultural delight i would say probably another day is awaiting and standing before you is a happy trainer because uh, this is the fourth course i would say happily 
because we conceived, but we were able to achieve more than what we conceived thanks to the addition of Smart Lab this time. Thanks to Gani Bhaskar Rao for permitting us to utilize the facilities. I'm sure uh, with the permission of our President BKR, I would say probably we are going to make something like an annual pilgrimage to GSL to utilize the facility in various avenues. And I'm sure it is for the benefit of surgical fraternity because in my heart there is no doubt as a surgeon we have to have the endoscopy not as an option but an essential and armamentarium because you have to think there is no scope in this world for a surgeon without a scope. So we all been in the passionate passage and we are going to take you further in the endoscopy training not only the basic like EFAGS but also next to the false endoscopy and focused endoscopy one thing. So for that all we need not only the patients something innovative. So we are already seeing the future. The future is very here in the Raja Raja Mandri. So I am very happy to be here. The three days worthfully spent. I think what you learn, I also learned personally quite a lot. I want to come back and learn more also on the part of the hospitality. I think the personal care and I am actually heartwarming to see the hospitality. I think the first time I stood extra thanks for all and I think we need to give both for Professor BKR because of the vision of having endoscopy training and uh, Gandhi Bhaskar Rao for having this vision of doing a virtual training. Both of them they need all from all of us a standing ovation I would say. Probably please cooperate with me having a standing ovation. Thank you very much team. And the last thing is and I request as uh, endoscope convener to see you one more time in the forthcoming even though it is too soon to see you in a Raipur because that's a place you have a colorful convocation here you'll have of course a participation education. something like this you'll be all getting with all this uh, uh, nice dress with your family so because we have uh, we are proud to announce we have announced a 10 honorary uh, fellowship for our all EC members and uh, we missed him receiving it on the stage last conference and he is fortunate to have so I request our president and joining with to him the BKR to give the honor and I'm sure this same honor you all receive when you come to Raipur. So I'm sure we are going to have a very fantastic cultural night so I'm looking forward for that. Thank you very much for the opportunity given. Thank you. Thank you sir. Now I request Dr. Sayandip Das Gupta sir to address the gathering. Professor B. Krishna Rao, Dr. Garni Bhaskar Rao, our President Zameed, dignitaries of the stage and of the stage the fellows now we have this is my second visit to Raja Bundri. last time we did last I came within two years back we had a FIGS course and at that time I got really really impressed by the simulation lab that was here and now after two years I see that it has improved many folds actually it was not I had I had gone and told me in my friends in the medical colleges that if you have to teach anatomy, you have to teach with this anatomy. If you have to teach laparoscopy, you have to teach with these simulators. This is the ordered way to go and Dr. Bhaskar Rao has actually brought it here in this remote place. Congratulations to him. Now, IEGS is all about teaching, what we have been trying from its inception 25 years back it is spreading the knowledge of laparoscopy and recently we have started endoscopy and wherever there is a quest for knowledge IAGS is there to go and quench the thirst for this knowledge and there are office bearers all are interested they leave their practice they leave that spend a lot of time and energy to teach people with enthusiasm about laparoscopy and now endoscopy. So I hope you all get benefited from all these things and now you have become a member of IAGS and you have come into the family of IAGS. IAGS not, is not like other organizations. 
it is more of a family thing so anytime see if you have any problem with endoscopy you can anytime call ishwar murthy or professor keshav rao and get his help get his get their help and they will mentor you to tie through the problems so that is a big advantage which you will not get in other organizations and secondly i must uh, i become emotional because in the last two years i have enjoyed immensely the tremendous amount of traveling i have done to different parts of india for fiigs fals and efigs courses and i have seen the tremendous enthusiasm which has moved me uh, so i have left my practice so many times I, yes my practice have gone down <laughs> because i have been traveling so much but i quite uh, enjoyed it uh, i have got no regrets about that and uh, in other courses also just like in fals uh, that is advanced laparoscopic surgery course we have seen a tremendous enthusiasm uh, which was unprecedented actually we never thought whoever thought that in a science bariatric course we would have more than 130 students coming in this year which is a tremendous achievement even aussie conferences don't have that much attendance which is a fact but iags conference uh, fals had 130 plus students coming in we just came from upper gi course in delhi yesterday it's still continuing these are two current concurrent courses going on i was in delhi yesterday Uh, with dr zamit pasha and sunil popat and uh, in upper gi endos uh, upper gi course we had more than 70 students coming to do a fals course so you just imagine the amount in the uh, amount of enthusiasm and there are more students there they will be coming every year and iag is there is there to cater i will be handing over my charges to dr sunil popat and he will take forward icgs more he will do more work and hope he cuts his practice and travels <laughs> <laughs> with these words i welcome you all to the icgs fold thank you and jai hind thank you sir now i request dr b krishna rao father of indian endoscopy to address the gathering president zameer chairman dr gani baskar rao dignitaries on the dais of the dais delegates fellow faculty members ladies and gentlemen the fourth course of the efigs has been a great leap in the teaching modality that we have started before in the FIAGS the number of modules the animal lab the and the number of cases that have been lined up to be shown to the delegates is phenomenal dr gani baskar rao has been extremely involved in the and the smart lab and to share with you a small secret he has spent 25 crores for the for the smart lab on gi endoscopy and the other equipments i don't think any individual or even a corporate hospital has ever considered essential for the teaching of the eng surgeons sir i salute you for your deep commitment and action of course he is supported by his team here who have been with him and have seen that each and every dream or wish comes true fellow delegates what you had today is one of the best training that you can ever get in any part of the world i can tell you because we have visited number of places 
and we are going to uh, get Dr. Gani Bhaskar Rao to get more involved in the training of the endoscopic procedures like what we go next is the advanced procedures like therapeutic procedures and then to single theme procedures of uh, ERCP operative procedures of POEM etc. I would like to share with you that to have the endoscopy as a part of the FIAGS has been with me and Dr. Udwadia, the founder president, for over a decade. And it crystallized by Dr. Ishwara Murthy, who is now the course convener, ably assisted by other faculty members here to get into place. And he has already got for 200, uh, 2018 uh, four more courses in different parts of the country. And I congratulate him for all the effort that he has put in to make this a success. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long uh, travel of 26 years since the inception of the FIAGS and the year of EIAGS, EFIAGS. And I'm glad to be part of this travel, see its growth and the enthusiasm that I'm seeing from the young surgeons as they go further from the initial comments that were made for the endoscopy that a person was passing a RILES tube. And that is gone. And today we are far more advanced and everybody is now keen to become an endoscopist more than a surgeon. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Zameer Pasha, sir, to give the presidential address. What is it? Push, push it inside. Yeah. People don't drop on it. Ganesh Subalakshmi, Om Shanti. We seek the blessings and guidance of Ganesh Subalakshmi, the mother of the chairman, Ganesh Bhaskar Rao before we start this inaugural function because this is the first inaugural function that is happening in this newly constructed hall and as usual she is there from above blessing you all the while thank you very much sir for this wonderful opportunity our founding father the father of endoscopy in india professor emeritus professor vikrishna rao sir the dynamic secretary sain dev das gupta the course convener of the EFIAGES, Dr. Ishwara Murthy, Brigadier Sharma, Brigadier Murthy, Dr. Shekhar, Dr. Satish Mida, Dr. Govindaraj, Dr. Satipriya, Dr. Sunil, Dr. Kanagavil, and the entire distinguished faculty of the GSR Medical College and distinguished fellows. When I say fellows, I envy you. You know why? Because you are being spoon fed. Everything is there, right in front, all at your touch. Gone were the days when about three decades ago, we had to go in the misty, cold, wintry streets of Hamburg in search of Professor Sohendra. He was doing that in Germany. And spend time with all our old courts inside. And here you will have a hall, just as big as this. The first will be reception, patient receiving area, then you will have upper GI, then you will have ERCP, you will have colonoscopy, you will have an ultrasound and his console. He will be watching all these things happening right from all his CCTV cameras. And we will be going around looking for ourselves, seeing, of course he will also be guiding. And in the evening, he will say afternoon, you are invited for an evening party. We will be in the party, about uh, 30 minutes down the party emergency call would come, all of us will rush back to the hospital. And again, next to biliary drainage, as usual those days, ERCP, running about. That was the way we got trained. 
and that sharing and caring the IAGES is doing for you is why I envy you. But that is the way we want it. By our having traveled so much, we don't want you to do all the same because after all, the next generation should be there to take care of the society for which is our prime concern. Of course, there will be hiccups. And as he said, practice, his practice is gone, or you are practicing. IAGS is a family, as was the name that was mentioned here by Professor B. Krishna Rao, about another founding father, with whose vision and mission this IAGS was founded. It's Bhatma Bhushan, Professor Tehampton Udwadia. And he is an avid golfer. And both of us have played golf together. Where else should you get four hours of total peace to discuss, to talk about so many things in life along with him as we walk the seven mile long golf course along with him playing, not only in India, across the world. Whenever there is an international conference of the laparoscopy, we also have a pre-conference round of golf we play. And then also, whenever he invites me to Bombay, to be a part of the faculty in the Center of Excellence for Minimal Access Surgery Training, his facility in uh, uh, Bombay. It will be typed with a letter, and below he will write in his own hand, if you come, I promise you a round of golf with me. True to his word, at 5.30 in the morning, he'll be ready there in the hotel lobby to come here. We play and then come back. 9.30, he washes and goes to his hospital. Then I come here for the course, see my scores, and we go about like that. And that is the way this is done. And as we were playing a golf, one of my golf mates was coming along with me. He asked me, Doctor, when do you become perfect? He's quite an elderly man. I said, Uncle, it's very difficult, Uncle. How can you become perfect? Oh, that is where you're practicing. Huh? So everything is practice. Keep practicing until nobody is perfect. Even after 1,001 cases, when I toss in bed at midnight in my bed, my wife asks me, what is wrong with the patient? She will not ask me, what is wrong with you? She knows something has gone wrong with the patient. It is your sympathy and empathy towards your patients that has made you come here, sit down and listen to all this. And that is why I gave you a little bit of yoga, a little bit of meditation to also ease your body and also your soul so that you will have this sympathy and empathy towards your patients, which has made what we are today. And this soul is something like this. About a fortnight ago, I was invited as a chief guest to inaugurate a state-level event in my place, an athletic event named after our late Dr. MGR, his 100th said birthday celebrations. And as I went in, this is the place is St. Joseph's College. St. Joseph's College is the alumnus of our past president, APJ Abdul Kalam. As I walked to those places, I had goosebumps. So this is the place where he studied, where he walked, where he did his primary education. From here, he launched all those rockets and made India proud. He became the president and made all politicians bad, all bureaucrats bad. And that is the standards, the benchmark that he set up. Not only that, that ground was also the place where Swami Vivekananda addressed Intuchi in my place. And also there is a tree under which Mahatma Gandhi sat. So this goosebumps, you know about the nationalist movement that you have. The same goosebumps I felt on landing here in Rajamundri. You know why? This is the birthplace of none other than our Professor Emeritus, Professor B. Krishna Rao. Sir, I had goosebumps when I had this morning in Rajamundri. <laughs> See, you are the father of endoscope. You brought endoscope. And you know the initial hiccups, as you said yourself, what you're trying to put a rail tube inside, a physician trying to do that, a surgeon trying to do that. You are a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, and the moment you landed with your scope back in India, all these initial hurdles will be there. Successful people don't do different things. They do things differently. And that was the way. And all these years, three decades down the line, when he walked back his line, memory line, and you will all be seeing, again I envy you because you guys are so fortunate, lucky that you are seeing a living legend right in your midst 
please may I request all of you to stand up and give him standing ovation. Sir, please sit down, sir. Thank you so very much, sir. And this is a great opportunity, sir. And Raja Mandri we landed and as he came in, it is become Raja Mahindravaram. And Raja Mahindravaram is the gift of the king, Raja Mahindra, to this place. Such an enriching place, enlightening place. And this place, as you walked in, as I see this big monuments, this will become Ganni Bhaskaravaram in recent times. It was really little bit <laughs> time that we changed this. And true to his name, Ganni Bhaskar Rao. Sir, this is the second time I am visiting Rajamandri. I came for the national conference of IMA along with the Professor Ketan Desai. And that was the time I enjoyed your awesome hospitality. We had a royal welcome along with the, we on the same hotel. This is a different hotel, not this hotel. Different hotel, we all stayed together. And we had a wonderful time. And true to yourself, including Ganni Sandeep, uh, Royal Progeny, you have such a wonderful team, Dr. Samir Naik, who is sincerity to the core. Where is he? Let's see. Oh, are you here? <laughs> come on, come, come on, the days and be recognized. Yes, yeah. Yes. Here is a wonderful man. Please give him a stand ovation for all his work. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Ah. And of course, Akruti, this is a wonderful facility and we really congratulate you. Please come on the days and be recognized here. We saw all your images, but he is now to be physically present here. Sorry, I didn't bring him up. Please come here. Come here. We recognized, yeah. It's time that we appreciate and in admiration of all your work. And also your postgraduates, they are so simple, so nice. Say, for example, Dr. Lalit, but who wants to be a physician, fortunately? <laughs> and Dr. Venkatesh and uh, Dr. Reshma, who is there? Come, 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 be recognized. You are all doing wonderful work. You've got all future ahead because IAGS wants to invest in the next generation to make carry on our work. So be careful. You have to do a lot of traveling, you have to do a lot of teaching, you have to do a lot of caring, you have to do a lot of sharing. All this is very, very imperative. And uh, we do hope that you all have an enlightening, enriching, and also entertaining weekend here in Rajamundri. And that's a lovely mango forms waiting for you for your banquet. <laughs> so the IEGS has done a lot of uh, work in education. And uh, we have a lot of executives. And uh, have you seen the book of Art of Endoscopy written by Ish Ishramurti? Released? Yeah, all of you have got it, the copy of it? Wonderful. Yeah. See, it takes, uh, as doctors, now we have stopped writing prescriptions. We just have computer generated prescriptions, computer generated notes. And for him to sit down and write, he has one best half along with him who does almost all the work. We are missing her today. Yes, she is always a part of uh, uh, EFAGS course, and but she is missing today. And so also is uh, Dr. Govindaraj, who is a master endoscopist. You know why? Because they were all trained by Professor B. Krishna Rao. <laughs> and of course, Satya Priya, he did the first colonoscopy course this year, our academic course. That was a very wonderful one. And it was inaugurated by the Vice Chancellor of the Kolkata University at that time. And of course, Satish Mida, under his uh, convenership, we had a wonderful year of uh, uh, FIAGES, so many courses done. And all these are welcome to the IAGS family. Sunil Puppet, as of course, welcomed by our signed himself as the incoming secretary and he has done a wonderful work and we are looking forward to a lot of things and uh, one thing uh, Sunil these things like teaching and uh, being with the uh, younger generation is a passion you cannot value it in terms of money people do don't understand one of my rotary friends asked me doctor you go address here go address there how much do they pay you what not only I lose money, I lose my income also. <laughs> That's what he said, losing his practice. But it cannot be valued in terms of money because this is something priceless. This has got no price. This is absolutely priceless. This is for the next generation. This is what we are doing. Because we have been trained that way. We have been brought up in India. And this is what the way we want it done. And Kanagavel, the most uh, dynamic a, a very, 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 very able educator. He is always, we welcome him. And of course, again, 
lastly we come back to ganesh baskar rao sir for his in spite of all his physical problems and uh, he is going around with a segway and uh, i am going to smuggle some some away from him take it away from you sir <laughs> and also i forgot sri hari that man who is going around sri hari come here come here come here come here <laughs> and if you want anything any technical problems don't ask any other faculty ask sri hari <laughs> he'll be able to tell you in the simulate lab please come come Thanks. we are so very happy Thanks. please give me a rose come here up come here up because these are the assets in your theater these are the assets you have to have interest in them but for them thank you very much sir see but for them our is totally technology driven even one small connection here they are gone we do not know what to do we are stuck we cannot abandon the procedure abandon the patient and go away to people like him they are our main assets we need to nurture them you need to keep them always as a team the team always wins and the captain of the ship is always you 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 never have to leave the ship you don't have to be always successful but you can always do a satisfying job because that only the satisfaction only gives you an ego satiation on that note wish you all a wonderful future looking forward to seeing you all in raipur during our annual conference for the convocation in your convocation groups thank you very much thank you so much sir now i request dr ganni baskar sir organizing chairman to address the gathering respected dignitaries in the das the president of ags and secretary and dr kishra and the principal and other the members of the ags and the the today came the program for the fags also it is a great pleasure for us to choose the center to do the fags in our center and i honored by all of the thank you thank you very much and uh, education and technology and technique and should not be concealed and should be teach and should be discussed should be shared only it can be live if our forefathers if the great surgeons if the krishna rao last uh, 1980 onwards he came to india and teaches us otherwise this many surgeons can't grow up like that it should be shared with the things only you can alive usually the general surgery and uh, is slowly all the people are picking up all the specialties now where we are you have to make a new technologies and you get a new horizons like a endoscopy and other things laparoscopy only is the choice of the practice in future one thing about the my uh, professor and uh, dr yu shastri in 1983 when both were operating one patient and somebody told that rajiv gandhi and uh, indira gandhi is expert and uh, rajiv gandhi became the uh, prime minister of india and just he told only one word he can't become a surgeon like me the surgeon can become anything but other people not become like a surgeon that's a great asset of the things to keep the surgery alive do update update the knowledge do the new techniques share with the complication don't conceal the complication if you share the complication with others only you know the uh, things the the complication written in the book definitely it it can be happen and unto things that a different issue that things should be discussed one of the frcs surgeon and uh, the way back 30 35 years back he operated a gj he anesthesized the stomach with the ileum he is the last retained the complication in the main gut it doesn't mean that it is an it is it is a, is a surgeon is a, not a qualified not a experienced lot it can be happen anything but what effort you do the patient most important i think best of luck and future uh, things with iags also will do it and please participate and update your knowledge thank you thank you all. thank you sir
a small token of gratitude to faculty members by EFI AGES Rajmandri. I request Dr. Dhanim Bhaskar Rasa to hand over. I request Dr. B. Krishna Rao sir.
डॉक्टर सतीश मुंडे Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, respected faculty member, dignitaries on the dais, my colleague, uh, all the fellowship members. Uh, it is a privilege to do a. This is the second conference from the IAGS side. We conducted a e FI, FIAGS program in uh, 2000, ago, almost two years back. At that time, Dr. Sainadev Dasgupta Sari is here with us. Uh, next, we actually plan to conduct this EFIGS program in January 26, 27, 28. But because of the January 26 and whether flight will come or not, that is a big, that is a that to, uh, that uh, we had a problem. So we changed to the 19, 20, 21st. And when I got a proposal and we discussed with course convener Dr. Ishwar Muthi sir, then we got information simultaneously at the same time one program is going on in the New Delhi FLS program. Then I had a doubt whether we can get this much faculty to hear or not. Then I started, we people are coordinating and most of all I have to give my sincere thanks to Dr. Ishwar Muthi sir. He almost negotiated with everybody to come to the Rajya Mundi. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, finally, now course program is almost on. Last uh, yesterday and today programs are uh, almost two people are conducting the program. Yesterday, 20, 21 people. Today, almost 30 people. We did a live all endoscopy and uh, colonoscopy program. Hope in the future also. Sir, thank you, sir. My sincere thanks for to all my uh, delegates, to all the I can't uh, the, the express my sincere thanks. It is uh, almost all the people who are here. They are almost uh, they because of them we are able to conduct the conference uh, this program. So again, tomorrow also we are lined up with another 20 cases, 20 cases, 20 cases. Uh, the workshop committee, the transport committee, the core group people, they are, they are almost sincerely doing their work. So my sincere thanks to everybody. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. And we are having a dinner, that is a banquet at Mango Garden. This is site of the, our hospital. So we'll meet there. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, there, we'll go there. Now it is. Huh. Uh, it is followed by a few and snacks near the where they had the lunch hmm. and there from there we have spot the ready. Nothing is ready. Chalo. Uh, sir, we'll come there on the final. The Janaman song is there. After that, we'll go to the dental college. <laughs>